The best TV experience you can have in your home isn't a TV at all. It's a projector. Modern projectors are cheap, bright, and can fit just about anywhere. And I should know, I've reviewed over 200 of them, 20 in the last year alone. I've also used one as my main TV for almost 20 years. Here's everything you need to know about how to buy a projector. There's a lot to cover with projectors, so I'm gonna to try to simplify it as much as possible. There are three main types of projectors for the home. The smallest are portable projectors. These are typically battery powered and not very bright. However, they're small enough to fit in a backpack and are designed to give you a big screen just about anywhere. If you wanna have something to watch on a camping trip, say, that's bigger than a tablet, these are great. The next size up technically aren't much bigger, but they're much, much brighter. They're designed to work in a living room or other mixed use space. If you're looking for something for the occasional movie night or just want a huge image for TV, movies, and games, some companies call them home cinema projectors, other companies call them home theater projectors. At the high end, there's the big, serious, incredible looking home theater projectors. These models are typically for a dedicated home theater room. Their luxurious prices are justified with the best picture quality you can get. Plus, they're typically quieter than their smaller, less expensive siblings. Okay. So what do you need to spend to get a projector? Portable models are typically under $500. The more you spend there, the more light you get, and typically longer battery life. For home theater, home cinema models, the entry level is about $500. Projectors in that range are very bright. Overall image quality isn't great. Between $500 and $1,000, there are a lot of options. This is really the sweet spot of price and performance. For around $750, you can get an amazing projector that'll work great in just about every room. Spending more gets you 4K resolution. I should mention that resolution is just one aspect of picture quality. And the low-end 4K projectors, of which some are just over $1,000, have great detail, but not great contrast or the color of some less expensive but 1080p models. Above $1,000, there's diminishing returns. You can get projectors that absolutely look better, but you might need to spend $3,000 to get something that's noticeably better. One of the best projectors we've ever reviewed is 5500, but you absolutely don't need to spend that much to get a great looking projector. There are a handful of important features to consider when shopping for any projector. With portable models, consider battery size. If you want to watch a movie and the battery only lasts an hour, that's not great. Also check what streaming ecosystem the projector has. Only a handful run the full Android TV. When it comes to home projectors, lens shift and zoom might seem kind of boring, but if you've never had a projector before, they can determine where you can place the projector in your room. Only a few projectors under $1,000 have lens shift, which lets you move the image vertically and sometimes horizontally. This gives you a wider variety of places to mount or place the projector. Zoom determines how far away from the screen you can be or how large an image can be from a specific distance. Most brands will have a calculator on their website to help you figure out if the projector you're interested in will fit in your room. Next up, if you don't plan on connecting the projector to a soundbar or a receiver and speakers, make sure the projector has a USB connection that can power a streaming stick. This will minimize the complexity of your setup and let you run just one wire. That said, no projector has great sound. You should always invest in better audio for any projector. Then there's HDR, or high dynamic range. This is one of the key buzzwords in the TV world, and it's making its way into projectors now too. When watching HDR content, it lets your TV produce more vibrant colors with brighter highlights. With projectors, for the most part, that's not the case. Most projectors, even those that claim HDR compatibility, don't have the dynamic range or the ability to create wider colors to make HDR much, if any, of an improvement. So for right now, don't pay extra for HDR compatibility. Some higher end models can do a bit more than others, but still not as much as TVs. Resolution is just one aspect of a projector's overall performance. That said, 4K on 100 inch screen is fantastic. Prices between the worst looking 4K projectors and the best looking 1080p projectors is actually quite close. There are two blanket assumptions you can make about all modern projectors. First, they're very bright. Second, their contrast ratio stinks. Now there are very wide variations within that statement, but it still holds generally true. You can't compare contrast ratios across different manufacturers, and even among single manufacturers' projectors, it's nearly impossible. We measure contrast ratio, and all or less than even an inexpensive modern TV. You need to spend a lot more to see an improvement in contrast ratio. That said, even with a relatively low contrast ratio, modern projectors still look great. Color, generally, is quite good. Low-end models will have worse color to improve their brightness, and portable models generally have worse color than the home models. As a rule, take any numbers provided by a manufacturer with a grain of salt. One last piece of advice. 
As bright as modern projectors are, they all need light control in the room. Curtains, the darker the better, will greatly improve the picture quality of any projector. Also, a warning, 100 inch screens are very addictive. That's why I've had a projector as my main TV for nearly 20 years. So, do you have a projector? If so, what do you like about it? What don't you like about it? Have you been able to convince your friends and family to get a projector instead of a TV? Let us know.